It seems like every single time the EA Sports comes out with a new Madden, they have a slogan and a set of features to sell the product to the community. So today we're going to look at Madden 2001 through Madden 2007 on the PS2 to see which features we liked, which features they should have kept, which features should have never existed, and all the crazy slogans that they use to promote their game. I did the same thing for Madden 06 through Madden 25 on the Xbox 360. You can check out that video in the top right corner of your screen, but let's get busy kicking things off with Madden 2001. Madden 2001. The slogan for Madden 2001 is compete in the only game that matters. And there's a common theme with all the features. Real NFL player models, accurate player sizes and accessories, down to eye black and turf tape. Real NFL emotion, authentic facial expressions, see the intensity in a blitzing linebacker's eyes. Real NFL moves, physic-based animations calculated from speed, mass, and hit location. Real NFL coaches. With signature playbooks and play styles, coaches work the sidelines and the officials. Old school teams and players. Over 200 of the NFL's greatest players and old school teams with throwback uniforms. Madden cards. Win, trade, and risk in-game cards to unlock hidden players, stadiums, and power-ups. So sometimes you can only connect the dots by looking back, right? And when they talk about accurate player sizes and accessories down the eye black and turf tape, they weren't lying because on the PlayStation, you did not have different accessories to make players stand out. You didn't have players with different style gloves, you didn't have players wearing sleeves or tape on their cleats, so on and so forth, right? But with that change in graphics and everything being upgraded, it showed that EA Sports kind of had a laziness about themselves when it came to putting players accessories on the right players, especially when it came to face masks. I remember safeties having giant face masks with offensive linemen having little face masks and just not being accurate. Now, of course, at that time, that they did not have all the face masks in the game, and a lot of people, including myself, gave it a pass. It was the first game on a new console. I didn't expect everything to be perfect, even as a youngster, but at the end of the day, some of it was flat out ridiculous with the face masks that they gave, like Herring, the safety from Baltimore. He had this giant offensive lineman face mask and then at the same token the linebacker for Baltimore had like a receiver face mask and so on and so forth but one of the more interesting things about the features list when it talks about real NFL moves physics based animations calculated from speed mass and hit location that's something that I feel like EA Sports has never really gotten right there's some games that perform better than others when it comes to tackle animations and realistic things that happen on an everyday, you know, basis in the NFL. But when it comes to speed and the mass of the player and the hit location, that is something that I feel like EA Sports continues to drop the ball in. There's so many scenarios, especially back on the 360, where they said that speed and how fast a guy is going matters, right? Well, then you would have one of the fastest guys in the NFL at the time, Deshaun Jackson, just run people over because he's running so fast. But Deshaun Jackson has never in his career ran somebody over. So the fact that they were talking about this back in 2001 and still have an issue getting it right, that shows that the PS2 might have been the generation that started the hype train and started the fact that EA Sports would start something and not finish it. Madden 2002. So the slogan for Madden 2002 is number one for a reason. EA Sports get cocky. So the first feature is kick off the season with the newest NFL franchise. Take the field with all 32 NFL teams, including the expansion Houston Texans. Football in your face. New player faces and on-field animations bring you closer to the drama and inside the huddle. A game within a game. Run the two-minute drill and earn points in the quick in the quick hitting, fast-paced new game mode. It's your game, it's your league. Create a custom league and start your own rivalries. Bang boom pow. Perfect the X's and O's with the help of John Madden in the new training mode. So this was the first Madden where you had players' helmets fly off, which I love, which they need to bring back. It's a shame that we didn't have it on the 360 version. It's a shame that we still don't have it on the PS4 version. Some people say, well, because Madden has an exclusive license with the NFL, the NFL is more controlling what happens. Maybe the NFL doesn't want to see that and understand that. But we see players' helmets fly off on Sunday, so I still don't get it. I do understand it, but I just don't get it or want to accept it. 
Um, when it talks about the Houston Texans, some people might not think of that as a big deal. But 2000, Madden 2002 was actually the year before the Houston Texans started playing football. So the fact that they were actually in the game, that was kind of cool. Uh, they didn't have any players with names, I believe. It was kind of like NCAA. It was just like halfback 32, quarterback number 7, so on and so forth. Football in your face is something that 2K actually capitalized a little bit better than Madden did. This was a game that you could actually see the player's point of view inside the huddle. You would be in the player's face mask. It did not translate into gameplay. And of course, you know, in 2K4, they started the first person football look, where you're actually inside the person's helmet while you're playing the game, which 2K did a pretty good job on. It's just awkward. Most people just used to the Madden cam, so it's awkward coming inside the helmet. But I thought that was just something, you know, cool and different that you could just change the pace of game and stop doing the same old same old when it comes to playing the football game and then the two minute drill and the two minute drill was awesome because a lot of times you might want to play Madden but unless you have like 45 minutes to an hour to dedicate to the game you're not going to be able to finish the game so the two minute drill is just like a sound you start it off on your own 20 with two minutes to drive down the field if you score you do it again if the defense stops you that's the end of the game we had two minutes to score as many points as possible which I thought was cool and then Oh my gosh, custom league. I wish that we had a custom league. I'm okay with connected careers, but I want a customizable league where I could be in control of maybe all 32 teams or could this be like an eight-team tournament, you know what I mean? Change up the divisions, change up the conferences, do it like how it used to be back in the 90s and early 2000s when there was only three divisions per conference. You had the North, I mean, not the North, but you had the Central, you had the East, and you had the West. That would just be something to change it up. Again, I have no problem with the way that it is now. I just feel like Madden is really three things, really just two things. It's either franchise mode or ultimate team and yes they do have the long shot and that was cool this year but at the end of the day madden is really three different things and that is actually play now franchise mode and ultimate team and all is head to head there's no real separation from each game mode so to me having a customizable league would be dope madden 2003 the best gets better is the slogan for this here game man ea sports was on back in the day take your game online Access an online community where you can meet, chat, download rosters, and play against Madden gamers across the country. Football's best commentary. Legendary play-by-play -play announcer Al Michaels and Melissa Stark join John Madden to complete football's best audio team. New minicamp mode. Tour the NFL cities in the Madden Cruiser and compete in mini games for unique Madden cards. New Create a Playbook. Create your own offense and defensive plays, formations, and receiver routes as you build your team's playbook from scratch. Deepest franchise mode ever. 30 years of career stats and player progression logic. Draft players with tips from your own scouting staff and export your franchise team in all game modes. New EA Sports Tracks. Features 11 hot music releases from Andrew WK, Nappy Roots, uh, P.O.D., Good Charlotte, or, yeah, Good Charlotte and Bon Jovi and more. So this was the first man that you can go online in. This is the one that had Al Michaels and John Madden as a broadcast team for the first time. New mini camp mode was solid. Again, you don't always have all day to commit to a football game, but sometimes you have that football itch that needs to get scratched. So if you did mini camp, you had the DB drill, you had different quarterback drills. Uh, I believe you had the receiver drill as well. You had the trench fight and so on and so forth. And depending on which drill you did, there was a situation tied to that drill that would take you into a real game scenario where you would play as the Tennessee Titans and it's the four minute drill where you have to give the ball to Eddie George and run out the clock. Or vice versa, if you were doing the chase down drill, you'll be a linebacker that has to stop somebody doing the four minute drill and try to get the ball back for your offense. If you did a cornerback drill, you, you would be the defense and you would try to stop the opposing team from scoring a touchdown. So it was just many things that you can do in this game. And of course, they talk about the deepest franchise ever with the stats being tracked for the whole 30 years of your franchise, but then create a playbook, which was fire because you actually created plays. It wasn't just take, you know, different formations and put them in the playbook, kind of like what we have now. It was you could actually design your own playbook. Now, I didn't mess with the defense side of the ball because to me, back then, offense was just a whole lot more fun without the, because you didn't have the hit stick at the time. You didn't really have playmaker control on defense yet. So playing offense was, to me, a lot funner. So I would always customize playbooks and formations. Like, you could have a stacked receiver look 
on the right side with four receivers on the right side, one receiver on the left. Like it was just, it was crazy. Like the things that you could do back then were just solid. And then for whatever reason, man, they took it out the game. So I wish that we had custom playbooks back in Madden where you can create your own plays. Cause to me, it was hot, man. Madden 2004. So the slogan for Madden 2004 is playmakers win championships. New playmaker control. Revolutionary new feature allows you to control players off the ball, change receivers routes pre-snap and mid-play, direct blocking downfield during a run and more. Enhanced EA Sports Online. Compete in quick matchup or all new online tournament games and chat in game with EA Sports Talk. Now listen to this. New EA Sports fair play settings, reduce online cheating and only reward players who complete full games. New owner mode, hire staff, sit ticket and concession prices and build your stadium with luxury boxes, scoreboards and more. Keep score by tracking your team's revenue and fan support. New integrated play calling presentation. Speed up the pace of the game without missing any of the on-field action. An all-new interface allows you to call plays while watching in-game replays, celebration, and reactions. The most realistic playbooks. Featuring playbooks from all officially licensed NFL coaches club head coaches and licensed assistant coaches. New EA Sports Bio. Track your accomplishments in Madden NFL 2004 and unlock special rewards by playing multiple EA Sports games like NCAA Football 2004, NBA Live 2004, and Tiger Woods PJ Tour 2004. So this Madden right here to me is the Madden that set things forward for what we have now as far as EA Sports going with a slogan to truly sell the game, to truly sell you on a new feature that's going to be in the game as far as gameplay is concerned. All the other slogans were like the best game ever, best game gets better, the number one game for a reason, only game that matters, yada, 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 all that bull crap. But this right here, and it was a game changer, I'm not going to lie, but this right here was the Madden with the slogan that was meant to truly sell the game. With Playmaker Control, had Mike Vick on the cover, who was the hottest NFL player at the time. Um, and the fact that you can now audible a play without changing formation was genius. Because we all know that Madden 2001 through 2003, if you were playing on all Madden, even sometimes on all pro, it seemed like the defense knew exactly what side of the ball you were running to right and they would just shift the linebackers and the d-line to that side no matter what so this gave you the ability to audible back to the other way without them knowing or without them changing things up and so on and so forth and owner mode was deep man the new owner mode in madden 2004 it was solid because again this is the first time that we had something like that in a madden nfl game but not only could you set ticket prices you could relocate your team you could build your team a new stadium and really build your team a new stadium now they have like luxury stadium and then deluxe luxury stadium it looks exactly the same this one's bigger than the other one's a dome one's outside this you could truly customize it if you don't want to have a scoreboard in the stadium you didn't have to have a scoreboard if you don't want to have luxury boxes guess what you didn't have to do it if you want luxury boxes on both sides you could do it if you want a scoreboard on the left not a scoreboard on the right you want a scoreboard with jumbotron on both sides you could do it it was just total it was just totally customizable you can have one sideline look different from the other sideline with stairs going up to the crowd or with a tunnel or whatever it was just the things you could do at that point back in 2003 2004 were pretty phenomenal and it makes a lot of people that played those games sad at where EA Sports is now because now it seems like we just get a watered down version of what we used to have and it's not anything new it's not like they replaced things with better things they just took out things to give us the most bland and to me boring franchise experience that you could have and when we get to Madden 05 and 06 you're gonna really see why I say that Madden 05 so the slogan for Madden 2005 was fear the D New hit stick control. Change the game's momentum by making a huge hit to force a turnover and fire up the crowd. Time it right or get burned. New defense playmaker control. Modify pre-snap assignments for each player on defense, including double teams, blitzes, and specific matchups. New storyline central. Your games are impacted by the stories that surround your team. Get the inside scoop from local and national newspapers email from assistant coaches and Tony Bruno's weekly radio show. D. 
deeper franchise mode. Player morale and stature are affected by on-field performance. Reward a hard worker by naming him team captain or trade an unhappy player. New fan presentation. Your team's crowd is now customizable with new creative fans. Be on the lookout for team-specific super fans via all new 3D fan scenes. Alright, so one of the biggest game changers probably in video game history, and I'm going to just throw that out there, but the hit stick. When you had Ray Lewis or John Lynch or Brian Dawkins, what up family, these guys would straight murder people. Like, it was freaking glorious to get a hit stick to time it right, force a fumble, and it really did kind of make the defense overpowered. I don't really feel like in Madden 04 that the offense was overpowered. Yes, Mike Vick might have been overpowered, but the offense as a whole wasn't overpowered. But one of the more glitchiest players in that game wasn't even Ray Lewis. It was Champ Bailey. You could not throw to his side, and you could not run to his side. The receivers could not block Champ Bailey. The fullback couldn't get out there quick enough to block Champ Bailey. Offensive lineman, the same thing. And he would never miss a tackle, especially on all men. I hated playing the Broncos in franchise mode. So at the end of the day, the defense did become overpowered, but the hit stick is a game changer that forever, to me, changed the game. New defensive playmaker control was awesome as well. It allowed you to double team receivers. You could change the zone coverage if you wanted somebody to drop back in the zone, somebody come up in the zone. You could do that on the fly. You could add more people to spy the QB because Madden 04, you only had a handful of defensive uh, playbooks that actually had QB spies in them. And when you're going against a Mike Vick, Don McNabb, uh, uh, Dante Culpepper, the guys that like to scramble and get about the pocket, it was kind of hard to stop him. But when you can have multiple spies, it made shutting down Mike Vick a tad bit easier. But now let's get into the franchise mode part. Because you had the new storyline central, and you had player performance being affected by on-the-field and off-the-field issues. People were upset about contracts. People were upset about how the team was doing. And it really forced you to make decisions because it could affect your team morale. So somebody like, and every time I remember firing up Madden 05, Jerome Bettis and Michael Strahan always gave the Steelers and the Giants problems. Michael Strahan was towards the end of his career, obviously, and they just got a rookie quarterback by Eli Manning, so they were pretty bad going into that season. Jerome Bettis was just demoted from starter to the second running back because they just signed Deuce Staley in Pittsburgh. So those two guys would always throw off the morale of their team, and they would always look to move them, or they will look to kind of, you know, boost them around by doing different things. One thing that I love is that you could reward somebody that was working hard to be captain. They didn't even have the C on the jerseys back then. Now you do, but you still can't name people captain. So to me, that's just something that's weird, man. Um, I also love the fact that you had the newspapers. And these newspapers actually told you stuff that was important. Okay, they told you about player milestones. So if Charles Woodson, you know, got his 10th pick of the season, they were talking about it. If Champ Bailey led the league in picks, they talked about it. If Tom Brady was having another phenomenal year, they talked about it. If Ray Lewis led the, led the league in forced fumbles, they talked about it. If somebody was unhappy about the contract, they talked about it. It wasn't this, you know, cookie cutter Twitter that we have now in Madden 2018. It was something that actually mattered. You know, I'm sick and tired of the Twitter feed telling me that I chose to wear alternate uniforms. Like, that's the dumbest thing in the world to me. But that's what we have in Madden 18. But Madden 05 and Madden 06 to me was the best franchise mode in Madden, in my opinion. Madden 06. And the slogan for Madden 06 is Year of the Quarterback. All new QB vision control. Look off the fenders, find open receivers, and make huge plays within your quarterback's unique field of vision. Each quarterback sees the field differently based on his attributes. New quarterback precision placement. High or low, inside or outside shoulder, control each pass by picking a spot and throw away from the fenders. All new truck stick control. Break tackles and pancake the fenders to clear your path to the end zone. NFL Superstar Mode. Experience the game in a whole new way by creating an NFL prospect and turning him into a superstar on and off the field. Complete with an agent, endorsements, and more. New graphic presentation, new camera angles, improved graphics, and new commentary and cutscenes. Enhanced online experience. Use the all new EA Locker to share files and play franchise mode games with friends online. So the vision cone is something that I liked. 
because it made you fool the safety. You had to hold that safety by looking the other way and then coming back to the right side to throw to your main target. If you stared down your main target, the safety or the corner was going to jump it, and I like that feature. It was flawed, though, because the O-line and D-line interactions weren't realistic. So while you're staring downfield, your O-line got beat way too easily and too often, and it made the vision cone somewhat unbearable, even though I felt like it was a good idea. And with the right slider set, it did work the way that it should have worked back in 06. And then you have the QB precision placement, which goes along with the vision cone. And we all like to use Randy Moss back in the day. Why? Because he was fast. Not because he was tall, not because he was big, but because he was fast. But this actually helped bigger receivers to be useful in the game. A lot of times we want to go with Marvin Harrison because he's fast. Chad Johnson because he's fast. T.O. because he's fast. But this made guys like a rookie like Mike Williams from USC, Roy Williams from Texas, even a guy like Larry Fitzgerald, people that you could just throw the ball up to and they would actually come down with it. And I felt like this was the best PS2 version of the passing game in the game, even though, again, with the O-line issues, the vision cone sometimes was a little bit unbearable. So then they also brought in the truck stick. And the truck stick was awesome because the team I would rock with the most was the Pittsburgh Steelers. And when you got your Jerome Bettis, the bus coming downhill with that truck stick, it was so fun. Sean Alexander was a good one to use as well. Uh, Jamal Lewis. And, of course, you also had uh, Steven Jackson of the St. Louis Rams. Those are great running backs for the truck stick. However, so many other running backs weren't truckers. You know what I mean? Clinton Portis at the time wasn't really a trucker. But Damian Tomlinson didn't run people over like that. You have Brian Westbrook, who was a glitch in the game, but he kind of got dwarfed because they weren't truckers. And EA Sports likes to focus so much on these features that it made those running backs kind of useless to you. They were fast. So that was good. When it came to breaking tackles, you know, the attributes really didn't live up to what they did in real life as far as making people miss and so on and so forth. And then probably the biggest one, Superstar Mode. Now, Superstar Mode was the first professional sports game that had where you could go into the actual league. 2K had it, but it was kind of like my park where it had a storyline, but you were really just playing on the park. Sometimes you play against NBA players, but not in an NBA setting. Of course, you had NCAA 06 with the campus legend or race to Heisman, I believe it was called back then. But Superstar Mode was first for the NFL, and it was phenomenal because you really had to focus on your player's career. It was still like franchise mode where you wanted the team to succeed, but you wanted your guy to succeed too. You had an uh, apartment when you first got drafted, then you moved into a mansion. If you got a second contract, you could ask to be traded. You got an agent, you got endorsements. Like It was pretty solid, man. And, and, and to me, it should Superstar Mode and Madden should be ahead of what 2K has or my career, what MLB The Show has with, you know, Road to the Show, because they were like first. So to me, it's kind of sad looking back. So now we get to Madden 07. Now Madden 07 on PS2 had one big feature that they do talk about on the back of the box, but basically all the features are the same for the 360. So I'm just going through them quickly. All new lead block of control, NFL Superstar, Hall of Fame mode, massive new highlight stick moves, deepest franchise mode ever that's what i'm gonna touch on and then authentic nfl defensive playbooks so of course you had a lead blocking control where you take a fullback and you can lead the way for the halfback and as soon as you make that block you can switch back to the halfback superstar mode hall of fame mode was a little bit different you got to pick your parents and you also got to change the skin tone which was something that you couldn't do in 06 if you got light skinned parents but you were like you know a dark skinned brother then you you were light skinned and if you were like a white guy and you happen to get black parents and you, you were black and you could do nothing about it this madden you could change the skin tone and keep your parents because your parents had a lot to do with your success in nfl to kick things off uh the highlight stick that was dope because this made every running back feel like they should feel bigger backs would still run people over while quicker backs would try to make people miss and all you had to do was flip the stick up kind of like with 2k's isolation mode where you just flip the stick up or you hit the deep path forget which one it is I haven't played 2k in a minute but your guy would do a signature move and so on and so forth that's kind of what it was on the on the ps2 and 360 for madden 07 but I want to get into deepest franchise mode ever. The description says this. Use the NFL draft scouting system and college all-star game to evaluate prospects or determine impact players with franchise player roles. So one of the roles would be like franchise quarterback. That's a role where this guy is a franchise quarterback. Other quarterbacks have like journeymen. Other quarterbacks have like field generals, so on and so forth. 
you know, and that was something that was awesome. But one thing that I loved was the college football all-star game. It was like the East-West Shrine game, you know what I mean, where the, some of the best college football prospects were playing this game and you could uh, you could scout them, you could actually play with them to see if they were fast, see if they drop passes, see if they were accurate, see if they missed tackles, see if they, they were a big hitter, so on and so forth. So it was just, again, the things that you could do were just phenomenal on the PS2 days, man. Um, Madden should be a whole lot better because this to me was the foundation. What they did on the Sega, what they did on the, the Nintendo and on the first PlayStation, all that was cool. All that, you know, felt like a video game. Then when we got to the PS2, it started to get real. Like, dang, this is like almost real football. To the 360, and I'm going to do one for the PlayStation 4 and the Xbox One games. But I just feel like this game should be up there with not just the best sports games, but the, sport, the, the, the best video games out there now. Because the foundation that this game was built on was, was, was set, man. They had a solid foundation, but somehow, in my opinion, EA screwed it up. But that's going to wrap it up. I know that this took a lot longer than I expected, but going back down memory lane, sometimes that happens, <laughs> right? But anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. As always, I enjoy bringing it to you. Until next time, I hope that the rest of your day is the best of your day. And Miles Doctor 24-7 is out. Peace. Hi, Sauce.